Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me this week, we have Amy. hey We have Stuart. Hello. And we have hmm. Eugene. Hello. So, this week is episode 91. We're covering the top five sci-fi episodes. So, specifically TV show episodes. Rules are the standard rules. One episode per series. Two a limit of, two episodes. Limit of two episodes per universe. So, you can have one episode of SG-1, one episode of Atlantis, but not one of SG-1, Atlantis, and Universe. If that makes sense. Now, yeah. so... This should be a fairly quick one. I'll start with Stuart. Stuart, what's your number five? Alright, uh, so I'm going to have a mixture of anime and live action. Well, animation, I should say. Not yeah. anime, because it's like Rebels and stuff. Yeah, that's fine. As long as it's a TV show. Um, so I'm going to kick mine off with... Uh, my number five is going to be the Gundam Seed uh, season finale. Or like the series finale before they did Seed Destiny. Oh, nice. Just a big, just a big space battles. <laughs> I got yep, sneaking, lots of big space battles. Got a sneaking suspicion space battles are going to be the pretty much the theme of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just the the reason why I like it is just the music. The music and the throughout the entire thing is fantastic. The I can't say the acting, but the animation with the voice acting is done really well, where it conveys multiple stories and lots of emotions and it just ties everything up really nicely nice uh, well on a similar note my one is from Stargate Atlantis season 3 episode 11 be all my sins remembered where they finally take it to the replicators and absolutely annihilate them from the Pegasus galaxy once and for all um, it's one of those episodes that I can watch again and again and again and I still find it entertaining so and to be honest, Stargate Atlantis and Stargate Universe, they do have those episodes where it's like, and skip, and skip, and skip. <laughs> this is one of those where I can go, and repeat, and still enjoy it. And repeat, and repeat, and repeat. Oh, yeah. Rinse and repeat. So, Amy, number five. My number five is actually the last episode of Librarians. Librarians? Wow, that's a blast from the past. Well, I've, well just, not really. It's all... they're, they're just about to do season two soon, aren't they? No, they've already got season two of it. They do? Season three, then? Yes. <laughs> I know they've got clear um, for another season or something. Okay. Well, the reason I really like it is because they're actually doing time travel. Ah. Um, <laughs> and they go into a, a room that has its time tra- traveling machines. Let's see, we've got a TARDIS, we've got a DeLorean. And we've got a few other ones, and I'm just going, I really? like it. Yep. <laughs> just sitting in a room. <laughs> wow. Covered in sheets. I'm going to have to watch that episode now. <laughs> Second <laughs> season, um, last episode. Uh. They're going, travelling back in time to stop, or to help, um, a Beth, Beth, with his writing. Fair enough. Oh, an author. Yeah. Because um, he sort of form, um, sort of combined with one of his writings and going crazy and trying to take over the world. The usual issue. Yeah. And taking out all the electricity. That'll do it. So, Eugene, did the barrel turn up? Oh, let's see. <clears throat> For the number five slot, I'm in the bottom of the barrel. We found uh, Buck Rogers Season 2. There were just so many fine, fine episodes in there of scum. Uh, that, so did, did, really, 
Can't choose one. Huh? They all they all they all sparkle equally as turdy. Pretty much. <laughs> you know, I, I think I, I wrote down for that one how to marginalize a major character while destroying a series. Yep, yep, that bad bad the bad covers it. So let's move mm. on to number four. My number four was Balance of Terror, which was from Star Trek the original series, season one, episode fourteen. That's the one where they're up against the cloaked Romulan ship. That, to me, is still one of my favourite episodes of Star Trek. Even though it is sort of original series and it is a tad dated in pretty much everything they do, that episode is still really, really cool. Um, so, Amy, what's your number four? Um, I'd say mostly Eureka, but I had to pick one. <laughs> so, House Rules. Nice. Eureka's um, such a good show. <laughs> yeah. What would you do to uh, ha- for a house that ha- is a high tech house? It learns as you do, it grows to suit your needs, and, and then you suddenly decide you want to go on holidays or buy a new house. Uh, How do you think the house is going to take that? Yeah, not only that, didn't the house fall in love with somebody later on? Yes, a robot. That's right. And then taught it emotions after it squished it quite a few times. <laughs> oh. And caused more issues around Eureka, black holes galore. Oh, Eureka. Eureka, Eureka, Eureka. <laughs> bizarre, bizarre show. How we miss you. I feel, I feel sorry for Jack. I really do. I feel sorry for Lorne. Wasn't he the robot? I thought it was Andrew. Andrew? No, Lorne from Stargate Atlantis... I thought it was the same oh. guy. I'm probably wrong. I, I would be scared putting Stargate Atlantis and uh, Stargate and Eureka in the same um, area. Actually, technically they were. If yeah. you actually look at one of the... Um, well, Warehouse 13 and Eureka are technically the same universe. And so was Alpha's. Look at the general that comes and goes, you're causing too much issues. Yeah. And that was only the first episode. <laughs> yeah. So, Stuart, what's your number four? Um, I don't know if this counts as sci-fi. Oh God. I'm gonna go the Flash season two finale. Flash superheroes involves time travel, technically sci-fi. I'll grant it. So- <laughs> superheroes for me, for the vast majority of superhero stuff, is science fiction. So, I'll grant. It's just, yeah, that 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 finale is still vividly in my head of what happened. <laughs> yeah. So, and with Comic Con being next weekend, we're gonna get some. It's gonna be very interesting where they take Flash. Oh yeah, can't wait. EJ is gonna be there. There. Um, I wish I could be there and join them at the Nobility panel and stay there for about. That long and go to the Flash panel. <laughs> but, Dude, the Flash panel's going to be insane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Plain and simple. So, anyway, um, Eugene, what have you managed to scrounge up this time? I decided to switch my number four and go with the final season of Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda. Because... Oh, Hercules, um, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Well, I thought the first couple seasons weren't bad, but the last season, because they cut the budget so freaking tight, you know, they really, once again, destroyed a, se- a show. Yeah. You know, they make running it longer than it should have with what they did. So, final season of Andromeda came to the top of the scum pile in this one. Yeah, well. I don't actually, I've only watched a few episodes of Andromeda. It's sort of like Deep Space Nine. I've really got to get around to actually watching it. My biggest problem with Andromeda is Hercules. And every time I see him, I want to force stroke him. I don't know why. I've just got this, this there's something about Kevin Sorbo <laughs> that I just can't stand. You gotta Maybe it's because you gotta watch Kevin the, Sorbo. You gotta watch the bloopers from season one. They're hysterical. Because he never had a weapon in Hercules when you think about it. He had a so, sword a few times. He had, huh? He had a, a few sword. Times, but for the most, 
right. But for the most part, he never had a weapon. So in the bloopers, he's constantly running around in front of the camera, just holding out, out his, his weapon. And in, in other scenes, he's just sitting there rolling it up and down on people's backs and heads. Oh, just for the bloopers' sake. Uh. He, he definitely had fun in the show. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying Kevin Sorbo isn't a good guy. There's just something about him that annoys me. I don't know what it is. It's sort of like um, Will Farrell, Dude with the puffy hair. There's something about him that annoys me. I can't put my finger on it. It's just They just annoy me. Anyway, moving right along to number three. My number three is one of my favourite episodes of Battlestar Galactica. It's a two-parter, so I sort of bent the rules a little bit. Exodus <laughs> Part 1 and 2 from Season 3 of Battlestar Galactica, where they go back to New Caprica and they rescue everyone. It's almost David unanimous. What? David, airlock? Airlock? David, please report to the airlock. David, airlock? Oh, cool. I wonder what's in the airlock. <laughs> No, it's, it's it's universally voted as pretty much the best episode of Battlestar Galactica. You've got Galactica jumping into orbit, belly flopping towards the surface, and it's like, that is terrifying. That's a kilometre and a half of solid metal falling through the atmosphere. It's like, there's no way that could end well for anyone anywhere. And yet, I jumped away at the last second, which was cool, and perfect use of their FTL technology. you got... The attack from Pegasus at the end, just wrecking house. Yeah, it's it's probably my favourite episode of Battlestar Galactica. I could watch that battle over and over again. Um, so yeah, that's my number three. So, Stuart, what's your number three? Uh, my number three is from Dark Matter. Ooh. And it is episode 9. That's literally what it's called. But it's when um, Four leaves the ship to go um, to go uh, meet his half-brother, who's the emperor of his homeworld, and then gets betrayed. And, and then that. The usual gets betrayed. Yeah, and then instead of meeting his brother, he meets his former instructor, and they try to uh, arrest him and take him back home. Yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. The reason why I like this episode is I love a lot of the traditional style Japanese samurai style storylines. Yeah. And just, I love that kind of fighting and stuff. It's really fantastic. Oh yeah, sword play is always cool. Alright. So, Amy, what's your number three? Uh, my number three is um, where are you? Is Grace Under Pressure. Stargate Atlantis. Oh. I, yes. love, I love this episode. Well, you first try to think if it's his imagination. Um, hey, uh, the, and it turns out it's a whale. Yeah, the best part about that episode is Carter in a swimsuit. Done. I'm happy with that episode. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's the only reason I watch it. Carter soaking wet. Giggity. Giggity goo. Giggity goo. <laughs> Well, what do you expect? They <laughs> had to get wet somewhere. Giggity, giggity, goo. <laughs> and they can't do... Well, they can't exactly do a uh, uh, beach day. Exactly. At Atlantis. But yeah. Now, that was, a, that was a fairly anyway. solid episode. Starts off with the jumper crashing in the water and sinking really deep. And they're like, how are we going to get these guys out of here? And yeah. Um, and then suddenly a giant whale. Oh, yeah. You, you really think, what on earth did they eat? <laughs> yeah. Like, really. They weren't on earth. Yeah, I was going to say, what on land here that they eat, but that's beside the point. It's Considering they've got, you don't really see much in the way of a food chain on that planet, you can only assume that if they're filter feeders like they are on earth, then they just eat a krill equivalent. Yeah, because there's no real fish in the water. That we see. Yeah. That said, I think they, they did talk about a, a giant space bass thing that uh, Carson was going to go fishing for, or was that on a different planet? I think they moved. I think it was a different planet. It might have been after they moved. 
because that was that was Sunday when when Carson died. Anyway, um, Eugene, what has your deep scoop reached up this time? Uh, the uh, not so award winning Galactica nineteen eighty. <laughs> Galactica 1980, when they finally make it to Earth and they do a shot of peak hour traffic with cars not moving and they're like, wow, look at that formation work. They're doing really well. Uh, (laughs) That was slack. I mean, mean, how wonderful is a show that has Wolfman Jack on it? How about a show that has kids jumping up into trees and they're like, wow, we could jump really high on this planet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, Super Scouts. Oh, God, that was really bad. Oh, fuck, wasn't it? They're, like, they're playing baseball, and the kid just jumps up and catches it from really high in the air, and they're just like, it's like, that's it out, isn't it? And everyone else is just like, what is going on? Oh, yeah, Galactica 1980. I, yeah. If I had a TARDIS, there's one show that I would make sure never happened. The only good episode in it was the final episode. Because it was the last and episode. The... And no, it wasn't because it was the last episode. It was just because that's the one that kind of tells us what happens to Starbuck. What happened and, to Starbuck? I know, don't even remember. He was marooned on a planet with the Cylon. Huh. I watched that. No, I've got 1980 on DVD. I just. I'm pretty sure my brain formatted that section a long time ago in an attempt to forget it. Just watch the last episode. It's the only good one in the entire run. Yeah. Um, okay. Moving on to number two. Stuart, what's your number two? Uh, my number two is the Doctor Who 50th anniversary. Oh, yes. Yeah, the 50th anniversary. I watched that in cinema. I, I watched it on TV and in cinema, so I got both. Yeah. Yes. It was something. It was something that you had to watch in cinema because it's because you're not going to see that in your lifetime ever again. Oh yeah. 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 That was good. Yeah. Um, the war with the Daleks and um, multiple Doctors and when the War Doctor interacted with the the two other Doctors and the the Matt Smith and David Tennant and he's like he's like wibbly wobbly what. Timey wimey. It's like, timey wimey, what? See, my, my favorite part of that is the um, is when they're sealing it up and it's like, oh god, it's all 12 doctors. It's like, no, sir, all 13, you just see Capaldi's angry eyes. Yeah. Oh, that so should have been the coordinates. Like, one of the things I think they missed out on was it would have been good to have that as a tie in at the end of the Missy story. Where she's like, oh yeah, here's Gallifrey's coordinates, go check it out. And he rocks up right as that's happening. That would have been like, <gasps> it's all time no, See, together. I think they'll have, well, because rumours are he, that he may be leaving this season, so if they're going to end it, I think they'll do it at the end of, like, well, not this season, this year, but like next year. Yeah. yeah he was meant to be the, he, potentially the longest serving Doctor, and he's gone, you know what, I'm sick of this TV show stuff, I'm going to go back to doing theatre. Bye! They're like, but we need you to to two episodes make, and they're like, bye. <laughs> God damn it! So he's defeating the point of being the long running Doctor. Yeah, well, one of the things is that's one of the rumors going around is that he's going to regenerate back to Matt Smith. Oh, please no. Can we have the tenth Doctor back? Tenant, 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 tenant. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll, we'll 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 do a who we should regenerate into later on. I'll we'll do that after we finish doing the top fives, just for shits and okay. giggles. Okay. Okay. Uh, my number two is another Doctor Who episode, Stolen Earth Journey's End. That's David Tennant era, when um it's end of season four. When Earth gets stolen and you see... Oh, yeah. yeah when it's everyone like, comes back. Yeah, it's like their Avengers episode. You've got Torchwood is there. Sarah Jane Adventures is there. All of that stuff comes together in a one massive ball of stupendous awesomeness. 
that to me is my favourite episode of Doctor Who still. Um, it was they tried to do it again in um, Devil's Run, but I still think this was the best. So, oh yeah, the Doctor Donna. So, yeah. So, Amy, what's your number two? Well, I've got to change mine because you won't let me have it. Because <laughs> <There's> another <laughs> Eureka character, a U- another Eureka one, which is body double. Um, I'm gonna go Torchwood um, for the last episode. How he's trying to save all- save all the children. Oh, Children of Earth. Children of Earth, yeah, the the miniseries. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. Captain Jack was no longer immortal, but everybody else was. Is that the episode? No, no, I don't think that's it. No, I think that's that's the other miniseries. That's the other miniseries. Oh, there's two miniseries. Yeah, this is the one where all the children were getting abducted. Oh... That's right, yeah. And at the end of it, he disappeared off into space because he was like, yep, yeah, you know what, I can't do this anymore. Otherwise, I'm just going to shut down in, in sort of my entirety. And now somehow he's going to be back in Doctor Who. Yeah. And now he's ahead of the jar. So. Actually, aren't they rebooting <laughs> Torchwood? And now he's ahead of the jar. Um, they sort of rebooted Torchwood a little. Um, they did an audio series. Yeah, okay. now, now they're doing an audio series. Yeah, no, he's ahead of the jar later on. In exactly. Doctor Who. Exactly. He, they, I still think that he should have been in that episode with Matt Smith, Demons Run, because the guys were sort of taking everybody's heads, and that would explain how he ended up as the face of Bo. Or, as Amy calls it, the head in the jar. <laughs> well, it is. Well, even though it's his full body. So. In the jar when they break it. I think. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's, just, just... it's just his head. That's all that's in the jar yeah. is a head. With lots of dreadlocks. So. Yeah, I forgot about the dreadlocks. Oh, yeah. So, Eugene, what have you oh, found? Geez, now, I've got a, now I've got a mental image of Barry with dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> That awkward moment when you see um, Jason Momoa and uh, Barabag going, Fusion. <sighs> oh god, no, no, what no, is happening? Just, no, no. <laughs> no, no, they just face swap. <laughs> face swap. Oh, somehow that's worse. I know. <laughs> oh, so, anyway, Eugene, what have you found at, down near the bottom of the barrel? Uh, the ever fantastic series Logan's Run, the series. <laughs> oh, the series that killed so many careers. Yes, the, we're talking about career that, suicide. That's how you do it. <laughs> so it was the series is just so fantastic. You know, we had an episode with ghosts. I think was the final episode. I mean, it was really bad. Oh yeah. Oh, Logan's Run. If there is a show desperately overdue a reboot so that we can actually have a decent version of the series, it's not you. We would never want to see you again. Just just go go over in the corner and hide. To think I about don't see why they're rebooting, uh, going to reboot Stargate. Oh, I see, I understand why they're rebooting Stargate. Because the original creator had no say in the show whatsoever. And the original creator wants to tell his his story, the story he wanted to tell originally. It'd be like if um, what's the face who made Harry Potter wrote book one, and then all of the rest of the books are written by somebody else. She'd still want to tell her version of the story, and that's effectively what the reboot for Stargate is. Um, well, actually, yeah, I guess it'd be one way. That that'd be a better way of looking at it. So. Yeah, it's just more the issue of you going. Um. But what about all the characters that are still... Because most of the actors are still alive for it. Yeah, but you could say the same about Star Trek. Most of the Star Trek actors are still alive from next gen. And yet, they've rebooted that. 
and you've got most of the actors from the original Star Wars stuff are still alive, and yet they did prequels for that. So it's it's not a perfect world, but they want to do. He wants to tell his story the way he wanted to tell it originally, and I respect that. Um, so, anyway, we're sort of digressing a little. Let's move on to number one. Now, number one for me is Window of Opportunity from Stargate SG-1. Now, this is the one where they're stuck in the time loop. I could watch that on repeat forever. Though that, to me, is the single best episode of Stargate. And it's from season four, if I remember correctly. I didn't actually write that one down. Um, and, yeah, it just... The way it loops, the way Jack and Teal are sort of like, Oh... Wait, you're right. There is no consequences. We could do whatever the hell we want. That's Easy. not a good idea. You're <laughs> <laughs> no, working on my back at swing, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Colonel O'Neill, what the hell are you doing? In the middle of my back swing? That, to me, is still one of the the best moments from Stargate, period. Because um, it's just so ridiculous. And my first thought is, you know what? This Stargate can dial other Stargates. What, instead of dialing the Alpha site, just dial one of the ones you can connect to at the time when the time loop kicks in. See if that breaks it. They didn't even try that, but that's beside the point. Um, the point is that it's very funny. Very, very funny episode. Probably the best part of it is Wacko. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Um, so, anyway, yeah, that's my number one episode. So, let's move on to Amy. Uh, mine's also a Stargate. Problem is, I'm trying to work out which one it is because it's so many, so yeah. many episodes they hit, they end up being body doubles with. Yeah. Their bodies keep getting stolen from them, or their minds keep getting stolen. Yeah. I can swap to the episode that Jack O'Neill gets cloned. Which one where Jack O'Neill gets cloned? <laughs> The how the, now we've got two Jack O'Neils. With the robots? Nope. The little kid. The oh, the little kid, Kitty Jack. I'm with oh. you. No, yeah, that's like the Loki. one where Loki abducts him in the middle of the night, clones him, and he's like, "How did you not age to full? What the hell?" And it's like, "Did you not clone? Make sure the clone is right, and then send it back." That, did you miss the, the quality control step? Cole, we're talking about Loki here. Since when, does he does, since when does he do quality control? Yeah, that's a fair point. He, more, he normally <laughs> just does chaos control. No, he just creates chaos. Same difference. <laughs> uh, so, Stuart, what's your Sorry, number get one? Get Smart's not here. What? <laughs> get Smart's not here for <laughs> chaos control. <laughs> Uh, my number one, Star Wars Rebels Season 2 Finale. Nice. Ahsoka vs. Vader. Ahsoka vs. Vader, Kanan going blind, uh, Ezra potentially going to the Dark Side in Season 3. Oh, and he's lost his lightsaber, so he's going to have to have a new one. Uh, well, not lost, more like destroyed by Vader. Yeah, you don't don't mess with Vader. You're gonna have a bad day. The only thing and that then, stands a chance and against then that, Vader that that emotional part where it's like, do you see the eyes of, of Vader? But it's actually Anakin talking. Oh yeah. <laughs> because they actually brought the cool thing with that scene actually is they brought back um, the voice actor who did Anakin in um, Clone Wars for that scene. Nice. So that was that that was Anakin talking in the Vader outfit. I was like. Oh, I, I got chill. I got chills. I, I full on got chills. Oh yeah. And with Star Wars celebrations being this weekend, we're gonna get a lot of Star Wars news. Oh yeah. So I think the only thing that stands a chance against Vader is Predator. Oh. No. <laughs> Predator has no chance. Why do you say that? Boba Fett fought Obi-Wan to a standstill by using tricks and shenanigans. And there's one thing Predators are really good at. Tricks and shenanigans. <laughs> you realise that Vader can just sense him through the Force and just 
easily just force choke him while he's invisible and kill him. And? Predator has no chance. But, the, but Predator's got a double-ended purple lightsaber. He's a Jedi Master. So? No. No, he's not. <laughs> I, I, I'm taking a line from Gohan. No. No. He's not... <laughs> Oh, Dragon Ball Z bridged. How I cannot wait for you to get to Super. Oh, dear God. <laughs> I don't think they'll ever get there. They still got to do the Boo Saga. Yeah, and the funny thing is, the Boo Saga is almost the same length on its own as the rest of the series. Not even joking. Have a look at the episode count. I actually haven't looked at that for a while. So, anyway... Eugene, you've been s- scraping the bottom of the barrel. What floated to the surface this time? Oh, the number one scummiest th- thing we could come up with. And it's uh, one of uh, George Lucas's pride and joys. Oh, God. Star Wars Day Special. <laughs> I try to forget about that. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Funniest part is, Disney has said it's canon. (laughs) Uh, You called it canon? I didn't hear that one. I still try to forget about it. Oh Oh, man. Oh Disney. Making Star Wars fans rage for quite a long time to come. (laughs) Canon. Anyway. So... Those are our top five best episodes of sci-fi, or in Eugene's case, doing his own top five worst sci-fi series list. That's just Eugene and his barrel. You never know what he's going to dig out of it next. <laughs> um, so, now, let's talk about who should be the next Doctor if Capaldi leaves. Yes, because that would be interesting. We need it to go, would be... if you if you want to go somebody old, it has to be Patrick Stewart. No? You know what really Ooh. funny? Oh. If we got Stan Lee. Oh, God. Doctor. I think that would end. Sean Connery. Sean, Sean Connery. 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 <laughs> Only if he talks like that. The weird friggin' way he talks. I just wanted to be, I kind of want to be a female. See, I don't... I've got no issue with other characters swapping, but there's something about the Doctor being female that just annoys me. I can't really explain why. I guess because he's sort of viewed as a bit of a... Sort of fathery sort of figure. Well, um, no, hear me out. If, if, we, if they do it, make the Doctor female, Judy Dench. Oh, God. Well, see, I've got no issue... No, no, with, I, actually, I take that back. Maggie Smith. Oh, God. <laughs> McGonagall is the Doctor. Oh, uh, actually? That might work. Anyway. Uh, she's got the sassy. She's going to be sassy. She's oh, yeah. the sassiness. Oh, yeah. Her sass is set to 11 at all times. Um, and I, I, like, I've got no issue with the Doctor being female as long as it's done for a story point. Like, as long as it's not done because people bitched and whinged <laughs> that there hasn't been a female. If that's the reason it swaps, then, yeah, th- that's not a reason. If you do it specifically oh, no, I, for a story, I, then, is, yeah. I just want to see how it would how it would work. Is it, is it's pure? Just for me, it's just pure. Um, pure time. No, no, it's just uh, cu- pure curiosity to see how they would do it. Is what it is yeah. more than anything. Well, see, the thing about Doctor Who is they've always sucked at writing female characters. Yeah, Rose. Yeah. Yeah, Rose. <laughs> yeah, I've I've had enough. Although of I that really turn... enjoyed Donna. Donna was fun. I did. I did not care for Donna at all. I didn't see Donna. I didn't like Donna at the time, but she's sort of grown on me. I thought Donna was hilarious. I thought she was great. Uh, <laughs> that was why someone, I, someone I... that were back talking. It was great. Yeah. The doctors do need that though sometimes. Yeah. They'd... Especially the the fire the fire of Pompeii is always there because he's like, Doctor Time Old yes, Donna Human no. <laughs> <laughs> and and the amount of oi, space boy, 
Oh, it's Earth Girl! <gasps> Make me happy. <gasps> uh, yeah, the... Like, like I said, as long as it's done for a story point, and it's done for a reason that isn't, oh, the feminists were crying again. Yeah, feminists, another shot at you. Don't care. Send your complaints to Stuart at SaveSciFi.com. Hey, hey, hey. It's not hey. a real email, so they won't go anywhere. Have fun with that. <laughs> now, if you'd like his real email, it is out the airlock at SaveSciFi.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, who else would make a good doctor that we can think of off the top of our head? Obviously, without a shadow of a doubt, um, Benedict would. He would be spectacular. Cucumber patch. Oh yes. I said it because Jodie's Jodie's like uh, moved in, so she hates. So every time it comes up, I always like cucumber patch. <laughs> She hates it. I'm just waiting for her to throw you out the front door again. How about Chris <laughs> the Judge? Chris Judge is the Doctor? Oh, God. That would be insane. The, the problem is the Doctor is always, again, a stereotypical, British. Yeah. So British or Welsh or Scottish. It's always sort of someone from that area. So it sort of rules out Chris Judge and a lot of those others. Funny, Let's just get a comedian in. Oh, God. No... How about I get you a mime in for the Doctor? Just a mime. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mime. It's just a Mr. Mime. <laughs> Mr. Mime. Mime. It's like, Doctor, we need help. My mime. Mime. Mr. Mime, mime, mime. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You're fired. Mime. Mime. I thought it would be that mime. <laughs> I know, but we, we hijacked it. It's hilarious. <laughs> Actually, I have, I have a couple of really funny Pokemon Go news and um, Pokemon Go stuff in the news. So yeah. So anyway, um, let's let's try and settle on one. Pat, okay, Patrick Stewart, yay or nay? See, I'd rather Ian McKellen. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Again, no, the... no offense to Patrick Stewart. I think they'd both be great, but I just I really want to see what Ian McKellen would do. No, no, no. You, I think we're doing it wrong. They need to be... One of them is the Master, one of them is the Doctor. One of them is the Doctor, yeah. Actually, you know what I'd love to happen? Another Doctor show up. A second Doctor. At oh, the same like, time. Like, uh... Oh, God, no. Ravana, that, no, that whatever her name is. No, 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 no. Like, same remember how... Um, remember how Ten had that uh, brief special with um Peter Davison's Doctor? Yeah. Do you mean something like that? I'm like, oh god, no, that breaks the... <laughs> no, you're going to screw the timeline too much. You're going to break no, it. I mean, two literal doctors. Uh, two of the it's... doctor's um, species. Oh, another oh, time, time lords. So yeah, sort of like Ravana or one of the other classic time lords. Yeah, two time lords at once. Yeah, that'd be interesting. But I thought they Especially all hated they tried... I thought they are all dead. No, no, they they come dead. back. They come back um, end of last season. The, what, yeah, I haven't watched um, Doctor Who for ages. No, nah, well, clearly, so. basically, he re he put them in a pocket universe and he found them. Yeah. So. So in other words, he put them in a big bag, and put the bag in another bag and lost it. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. And then he found them again. Watch, watch the fifty. It explains everything. Pretty much, yeah. So, anyway, uh, I vote Patrick Stewart as the master if you get the doctor. If you get Ian McKellen as the doctor, okay. Yeah. I'd be happy with that. That'll work. Okay, what about um, the Doctor Goes Young McGonagall? One. Who would be the master? Harry? <laughs> 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 Oh, that would be... Wow, that would be the worst and yet the best thing ever. Oh. <laughs> well, see, no, I was going to say... Um, um, Can you imagine get, get... Missy? No, no, I was going to say the actor who does um, Argus Filch. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> no, I still think Missy coming up against McGonagall would be the funniest thing in the universe. <laughs> so, I'm so, so sad we didn't get to see Michelle Gomez. Yeah. So, anyway. One day. Anyway. One day. There is a long list of different people that could play the Doctor. Um, and the Master. And the Master, and any other Time Lord. Lady. And unfortunately, but unfortunately, they have locked the Doctor down to British or Scottish. Yeah. But I still would find it funny, Christopher Judge, <laughs> being a Doctor. Uh, so. Anyway, um, let's... And how about Samantha Carter as the Master? Oh, God. <laughs> so wrong. So, so wrong. It's time to do the model report with Perry County Hobbies. Woo! What you... uh, we'll keep it. We'll keep it short this week. Uh, Mobius Models has released a few pictures of the upcoming Batman versus Superman Batwing kit. Um, there's only one or two pictures out, but given the detail and how well the kits have been to date from Mobius, I really expect that to be a nice kit. Oh, yeah. Um, I would expect to see that in your local hobby stores probably around the end of the year. That yeah, sounds about right. <sighs> That's the hobby report from Perry County Hobbies. <laughs> you said short and sweet. I didn't expect it to be a minute. <laughs> It's running out of um, new releases at the moment. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry, with Comic-Con next week, there'll be a ton of stuff. Oh, yeah. Actually, in the case of the uh, hobbies, we have to wait for Wonderfest. Which oh, is yeah, you got Wonderfest, yeah. Yeah, that's the big model show over here. Yeah, yeah, true. And, and that's coming up if it hasn't occurred already. So details oh, should be leaking out real soon. So, anyway... um. Let's go with... Yes? Nah. Uh, no, you know what? I'm going to have a, mo- hobby, a model report, damn it. I've... My Independence Day thing turned up. Yay! How's that going for you? Wait, oh, you got a mothership? That's sh- the, the, I, got a, I got one of the fighters. The fighter oh, okay. statue thing that I ordered a couple of, about, about a month ago. Um, that thing looks great. It looks so cool. Seriously... If you uh, the fighter itself is really really detailed and it comes on a kick-ass stand, and you also get a Blu-ray of the ex- of the the extended version of the um, original Independence Day movie. If you love Independence Day and you love the look of the fighters, p- grab that. Just find it anywhere you can. It is worth it. Very very awesome. Um, so that is my model report brought to you by Perricane Hobbies. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Because I can. Because I can. Can we move along to the news? Because there's some really funny Pokemon Go stuff I want to talk about. Oh, yes. Yes. I, I, news it is. Cue the news. Goes to it. All right. So, uh, so as I said, Pokemon Go came out on Friday. Oh, when didn't that blow up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then some. In, in the couple of hours that, and it's launched just in Australia, Nintendo stock rose by 9%. Yeah. Put it this way: at current, at current standing, eleven um, Nintendo stocks have in, have increased in value by eleven billion dollars. Yeah, put it this way: I've heard from um, different people that the traffic the servers got and are still getting is in the order of nine thousand percent what they expected. Really, that bad? Yeah, ninety if, times what they expected. If anyone... If anyone ever thinks Nintendo is out of the game uh, wars, just show them this. <laughs> yeah. This goes to prove Pokemon is still a money cow. It was really funny. Yep. Funny, funny story on Pokemon Go, really quick. I was in the Brisbane city on Saturday night. So this is only a bit over 48 hours after it sort of dropped. And there There's was people everywhere. everywhere playing it. Because I was in a group of about yeah, six people. Of- and yeah, there's bump- a couple of Pokewalks happening this weekend. Yeah, we'll get to the Pokewalks in the news in a minute. Um, so so we're walking around, we're like, oh my god, there's a Blastoise down this way. And as soon as I said it, all I heard echo everybody was, where? Blastoise, where? Where's the Blastoise? 
And before we knew it, there was a mob of about 40 of us standing outside of a high-rise building. And we're just like, I'm thinking to myself, okay, if anyone is in this building, looks outside, and out of nowhere, 40 people turn up, all using their phone outside the building, it's a little bit like, hmm, this is not normal. What's going on here? <laughs> it was a fucking Blastoise, people. <laughs> not only was it a Blastoise, it was like level 300 and something. Ridiculous. I went up seven levels in three hours in the city. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't have it yet. You're fired. Go, like go, go, please report to the airlock. No, my phone at the moment is playing stupid. Yeah. I may or may not have bought a new phone, so I may or may not play it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my phone is actually not even ringing at the moment, so... Oh, well. And for anyone playing, anyone playing that game in a country that uh, right now is not legally offering it, fair warning, they have found some very nasty viruses embedded in in the uh, APK file. Yeah. So you'll want to be very careful with that. Exactly. Um, and just because there's Pokemon in a uh, police station, do not go in it. Oh, yeah. It, <laughs> that, that's a notice from Darwin. Stuart, please tell me you've got the update on the Sydney Pokewalk. Oh, um, I can get it up. Yeah, go, go I was find that. Talk it's about... fucking hilarious. Oh, I've got another story. Um... So, uh, what, uh, this is great. In America, Westboro Baptist Church is a gym. Oh. Oh, so, no. what someone... Oh, wait, no, no, it gets better. So, what someone decided to do is they took over the gym, they left a Pokemon in there, and, the, and they nicknamed it Love is Love. Wow. So, oh, no, no, no it, this is where it gets really hilarious. <laughs> so, the Westboro Baptist... Uh, strike back by taking the church back, pulling a g- and they photosh- uh, t- with a Jigglypuff. Then on the- then they photoshopped the Jigglypuff holding a sign saying repent or perish. They went so far to- that they posted a vine featuring Jigglypuff singing repent and perish over and over again. Wow. <laughs> I- <laughs> what the hell? Just, just out of curiosity, would... what colour is the Westboro Baptist Church playing as? Uh, yellow. Yay! It's not blue. Hashtag go team blue. <laughs> I'm blue, so yes. Yay! Hashtag go team blue. Michael <laughs> is. Gone. Michael's red. The only person I know that's yellow is Jesus. One of my friends that we call Jesus. I go on record and say that um, anybody that wants the group from Westboro Baptist Church is more than welcome to take them because we don't want them. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants them. Yeah. So, yeah, um, from uh, looking at the, so there's been a whole bunch of uh, Pokemon Go walks. We're having a couple in Brisbane this weekend. There was a bunch in Sydney <clears throat> last weekend. The turnout for the Sydney one, which is a, uh, uh, it said on the event page that 13k were interested, five and a half. 5.3k went, but it's not that, it wasn't that big. It was probably at least about a thousand for sure. Yeah. So, it put it this way. They expected about, it's organised by the, either the guys that do Supernova or the ones that do Oz Comic Con. I can't remember which one. Um, uh, it was Oz Comic Con because they, they were the one, they were the, they were the guys to actually, because they actually posted it on their yeah. Oz Comic Con page. Alright, so it was Oz Comic Con. So, um, anyway, they expected 100, 150 people Within a couple of hours, they'd got a thousand people that had said they were going. At which point, they're like, hmm, this is going a little bit out of hand. By the next morning, it was over 4,000 people saying that they were going to go. <laughs> they're like, hmm, maybe we should tell the police and stuff because this is getting a little bit crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, it got so bad that they actually had to report to the police and say, look, this is what's happening, don't freak out, there's just going to be a mob of up to 13,000 people wandering through city, Sydney, city, looking for Pokemon. So, if you see us or you hear reports of a herd of people looking like idiots staring at their phone, you know why. (laughs) (laughs) 
I wonder what response I got from the police for that. Oh, who who knows? But yeah, yeah. Um, for the I, warning. I still fu- I still love the Darwin one that Amy mentioned. Darwin police posted on their Facebook page: "You do not have to go into the police station to access the Pokestop. You can access it from outside. A lot of our officers are playing this game. They can access it from inside, and they could also access it from outside. So enjoy playing Pokemon." Just leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got a Brisbane, we got a Brisbane walk uh, on Saturday that me and Jody are going to. Yeah. And uh, so it starts out at the Botanic Gardens, goes to the Goodwill Bridge, oh, then the South dude, Bank. Dude, Botanic uh, the Gardens wheel. is overrun with Jinx. Like you have no idea. <laughs> I got like seven of the damn things in five minutes. It's like what the hell? It's like, aren't you meant so yeah, to be rare? To Why are there so many of you here? This doesn't make any sense. I know a couple of people have caught Mews. No, nah, that's bull, because that's... That's, that's a lie. Uh, you choose. That's a lie. You no, choose. That's a lie. No, that's a lie. There's been no events, not even anywhere around the world for it. Yeah. If they say they've caught it, screen grab, send it. I will ask. Screen grab or it never happened. Like, make sure you get proof, because there's been nothing for any... There's not even any Moltres's or Articuno's or Zapdos's. Yeah. All the legendaries are buried away at the moment. Um, yeah. Oh, man, so many so many fun PokeGo stories. But there's also a, a negative PokeGo story that I heard. I can't remember where I heard it, but it's sort of a oh, fairly a big thing. Oh, a couple I've heard. Um, one of them was that these guys were dropping the boost on a fairly... Um, remote Pokestop to boost the stuff you get out of it. The lures. That's what I was trying to get what it's called. And when people turned up to use the lures, they would be mugged. At either gunpoint yeah. or knife point. Um, and then the people would disappear. So be very, very careful when going to Pokestops. Do not play Pokemon on your own. If you're walk- out and about, wandering around, get a group of friends or find somebody else that's playing it, if you're both playing it, you'll probably get along, have a bit of a laugh, have a chat, and walk together. Safety in numbers. Um, yep. So, Which is why they go go out in herds. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why you should really look at doing one, of the, setting up a pokey walk yourself. Like, I'm looking at setting one up to having it as a weekly event, sort of down around where I live, where every Monday night, a group of people that want to play it will meet together, and we'll go from a walk from a park that's near where I live, down along one of the, the streets that has lots of different poker stops. Have a bit of a chat, have a laugh, catch some new guys, and wander back to the park again. Um, that way, there's sort of twenty of us as opposed to three. Mine, so, so yeah. So organize a walk in your town. I know there's one going on in Armadale. I know there's one going on in Port Macquarie. There's one going on all over the place. Just jump on Facebook, look at events, look for Pokey Walk, see if there's one in your area. That's the best advice we can give. And if there isn't, start one. You never, you never know. You might have 20, 30, 40 people turn up in people you've never met before and you could get along great or you could hate them all. You never know. So, like, Muggers, uh, David would like you to bring bring your friends and meet him during his poke walk. Yep, yeah, Muggers, good luck. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. There's thousands of people playing, so it won't be hard to find a group. Oh, yeah. No, it's crazy it is i've never seen something like this happen on, yeah. a, on a mobile game nonetheless yeah well like... that's the thing it's 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 like all the memes you see online like the meme from the episode of the simpsons when itchy and scratchy gets cancelled or replaced or whatever oh. and you see all the kids <laughs> yeah. walking outside rubbing their eyes that is literally what is happening to everyone below the age of 28 <laughs> oh, no i found something really funny um i popped up on my facebook wall we are confusing the children they now have to go outside to play a uh, game. Yeah. Play a computer game, electronic game. Uh, to walk and do the exercise. For the record, my legs hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I may have... I've walked more in the last three days than I have in the last six months. <laughs> I hatched... Oh, get this. One of my mates hatched a 10k egg. Got a level 23 jinx out of it. Oh, wow. Three Is steps. Three steps later, my two K egg hatched. Got a level two hundred Squirtle out of it. <laughs> he was not happy. 
No. <sighs> so, anyway, moving on from Pokemon Go to other news. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um. So Starless Celebration is is this weekend. Woo. Um. We're gonna get. Uh. We're definitely getting a Rogue One trailer. That's been confirmed by Disney. Uh, we'll definitely, I don't know if it'll go online, but we'll definitely get some sort of Rebels news because there's a Rebels panel happening. Nice. Um, Mark Hamill has his own panel, so maybe they might tie in something with episode 8 there, I'm not sure. Unlikely, but not impossible. Oh, well, he's been doing a lot of... Like he's been doing a lot. He's been mentioning it and talking about it a lot on his Twitter. So yeah, and he's also been getting in a hell of a lot of trouble for doing that. <laughs> hell Oops. of a lot of trouble. Like the whole oh yeah, I'm not going to be in episode nine fiasco. Oh, that was that. No, see, no, that wasn't his fault. That was just people taking his answer the wrong way. Yeah, I know, but still. Um, Carrie Ooh. Fisher has her own panel. That would she'd make a good uh, doctor. <laughs> Half a dog is the master. <laughs> and look, Robot Stewart's back. Oh, am I back? Oh. Not good. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> There's you're... a piece of news. There's a piece of news out from Star Trek Renegades. Oh, yep. Yeah. Has anybody seen it, or should I just go ahead and read it? Um, is, uh, is that the one is that where... the one with the... Oh, you go. I was just saying, that's the one where they're sort of saying they're cutting away from Star Trek and doing their own thing? Yep, they've shown the new uniforms, the Star Trek badge is gone, and they're now being enlisted by the Confederation. Nice. Uh-huh. And they're going to be kind of an interstellar special forces. That's pretty cool. Uh, current guests that are lined up will be, well, Adrian Wilkerson, Nichelle Nichols, Walter Koenig, Tim Russ, Robert Beltran, Robert Picardo, Edward Furlong, Muna, yeah, I cannot, cannot pronounce that last name, <laughs> or Ma Manu, Ma Manu, uh, uh, yeah, whatever, uh, Terry Farrell, Sean Young, and many others. Nice. So, Stuart. Yes, uh, more news? More, more. To be honest, majority of the news is either just Ghostbusters or Star Trek, and I'm like, uh Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you for eh in the Ghostbusters news. I've heard that it is... I've heard two very conflicting stories. I've heard a lot of positive reviews. I've heard, yeah, let's see, on Rotten Tomatoes, if you go um, all critics, it's got 70, 78%. Yeah. If you go, um, like, the paid critics, it's like 48%. It's like, well, it's not, it's, it could be a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. I heard it's very much a, a feminist. See, the other side is I heard it's very stupidly feminist. Like It's feminist and it's feminist. Yeah, no, it's the, the, the feminist. Not feminist. If that makes yeah. any sense. Anyway. So. Oh, actually, I've got some Suicide Squad news. Ooh, Suicide Squad news. So yeah, we know, we finally know who the big bad uh, villain is going to be, and no, it's not the Joker. Groot. Oh. Batman. Oh. Flash. Superman. Oh. <laughs> no, literally, the big bad villain is called the Adversary. That's sad. <laughs> so uh, Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> Quick list, red of DC characters. Uh, 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 Go. Apparently, um, Enchantress, uh, so it's like a mythical being, so um, they do battle Enchantress for a bit, but then obviously she goes to their side. Alright, cool. Well, that's it for this week's podcast. Thank you for joining us. You can catch us on iTunes, Facebook, Stitcher, and YouTube. Keep an eye out for the Save Sci-Fi podcast on those. Make sure you check out facebook.com slash save sci-fi for all your sci-fi related news. Facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom for all of your kick-ass sort of news from there we are expecting to drop something on there really big really soon so keep an eye out on that um make sure you check out garrison 7 who also has some more big news coming soon 
Uh, make sure you check out Perry County Hobbies and all that sort of stuff. Nobility the series, blah, blah, blah. So we'll catch you <laughs> next time. Bye. 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 So, yeah. Definitely check us out on YouTube. You know you want to. Um, we do all the podcasts got there in video form. Yeah. Yeah.